Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are going to talk about rabbits yet again. And in today's video, we're going to kind of follow up on the topic that we've been talking about here for the last couple of weeks or so, and that is rabbit diet. So the majority of rabbit problems, not all by any means, but a very large portion of rabbit problems are a result of an improper diet. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the fresh fruits and vegetables that your rabbits can and cannot get. We're gonna talk about oxalates, uh, which is one of those things that is talked about a lot on rabbit forums and rabbit websites and some of the misinformation that is out there. Um, and so we're gonna tackle all of that in today's video. It may be a little bit longer and that's okay. Uh, so hopefully you guys are willing to stick around until the end of the video. We also are nearing very closely to 100 subscribers. So if you guys wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button if you're watching this and are not subscribed, uh, because I am trying to make it to 1,000 subscribers. And that's my goal for 2021. So hopefully you guys are willing to help support me to get there. Let's get started. So like I said before, this video is primarily about fruits and vegetables, specifically and the majority of this is going to be about vegetables. This is kind of a follow-up video to the video that we did on Tuesday, where we talked about what types of hay your rabbit should be eating. And so if you haven't seen that video, go back and check that video out when you get a chance. The link will be down in the description and it'll also be at the end of the video. Basically, rabbits in the wild are going to eat primarily leafy greens, and that includes different types of dry and fresh grass. That includes different types of you know, lettuce, it's going to include lots of different leafy things. Now, the one thing that rabbits should avoid for the most part, except in maybe a few circumstances and in small quantities, is alfalfa. Um, and that is one of the big things that people sometimes don't understand, is that rabbits are not supposed to get lots and lots of alfalfa, but instead they're supposed to get lots of leafy things. Um, lots of grasses, all of those things. So that's the heart of that video, but go check it out. It's worth a watch in my opinion. I mean, I'm biased, but that's okay. So what vegetables should you be wary of in rabbits? Um, what vegetables are really good for rabbits? Well, today's video is not going to be a full complete list because I cannot list all of the vegetables on the planet, obviously. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through kind of three groups of vegetables. One that is high in oxalates, which we'll talk about in just a second. One that is a normal leafy vegetable that it, you know, they can have just about as much of as they want. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about some non-leafy greens, and then we're gonna talk about fruit. So I guess four, not three. I can count some days, some days. <laughs> well, that's awkward. So here's the part of the video that if you just want the short answer, you can leave after this. So. What is the rule of thumb for if a vegetable, a leafy green, I'm not talking about broccoli, I'm not talking about carrots, I'm talking about leafy greens, different types of lettuce, etc. What is safe for rabbits? The rule of thumb is if it's safe for humans, it's probably safe for rabbits. But here are some of those vegetables that I use, here are some that I would be a little more leery of, and Let's talk quickly about oxalates. So oxalates are one of those things that are sometimes spoken of in hush tones uh, at the dinner table. Not really, uh, except at my dinner table for some reason. But oxalates are one of those things that we talk about of what is it? Why should we avoid oxalates in rabbits? Why do we avoid oxalates in people? And that's a really good question. So what is oxalate? Well, oxalate is made up of four oxygen atoms and two carbon atoms. And this molecule is really, really good at binding to specific ions, such as calcium, sodium, potassium, and there's a whole host of other things that it's really good at binding to when in solution, so in urine or uh, things like that. In people, oxalates are often the cause of urinary stones. Not always, and there's a whole bunch that goes into that. I'm not a medical doctor in, for humans, but just know that oxalates can cause issues in people. If you wanna go find out more, there are several articles listed below that are in regards to humans. But oxalates in rabbits often are going to cause a sludgy bladder. And the reason that they can do this is that they will bind up excess of calcium that's in the diet. Now, a lot of times rabbits that are eating high oxalate contents 
are also eating high calcium diets. So often they're getting high levels of alfalfa, which contains high levels of protein and high levels of calcium, or they just get unlucky and whatever they're eating has high levels of calcium in it. Sludgy bladder, I made a whole video about it and you can go check that video out up here. But essentially what happens is you get some sort of calcium salt often it's going to be related to calcium oxalate and it's going to form a sludge, literally a sludge in the bladder. And it can be extremely painful for rabbits and it can be very hard for them to pass this and it can be kind of troublesome for their overall health. Now, one of the things that's often spoken about of having really high levels of oxalate is kale. And this is one of those that I'm not sure how this started, I'm not sure what study was cited, but often people say kale has high levels of oxalate in it, and it doesn't. Um, so I have two articles that are listed down below, the first two on the list, and they both are showing that oxalate content in kale is actually very low. So that is one of those pieces of misinformation that you'll probably find on some bunny websites, you'll find in some human articles, and it's just not true. So take that for what it is, go do your research if you're concerned but kale is not on the list of things that can't be given to rabbits in high quantities. So this first group of vegetables is actually going to be the group that is highest in oxalate content. Now, this shouldn't make up any more than about a third of your rabbit's diet. I'm not saying that your rabbit cannot have these types of vegetables. However, limiting their content to decrease the amount of oxalates that your rabbit is eating is probably a good idea. These can still be really good and there's a lot of benefits to these really dark leafy greens, but in moderation. So make sure that when you guys are feeding these, and I do encourage you to feed some of these, just make sure it's in moderation and you're not feeding them for weeks on end with these high oxalate plants. So as a general rule of thumb, I recommend this being only about a third of your rabbit's fresh diet every day. Um, and these types of vegetables can include parsley and spinach, which are really good and very rich in vitamins and minerals, mustard greens, beet greens, Swiss chard, radish tops, um, and all of those types of vegetables can be really good. They're just higher in oxalate content, so be careful and don't overfeed them. So this next group of leafy greens is the group that you can basically feed as much as your rabbit can eat with the exception of obviously if your rabbit has not been on these types of vegetables in the past, don't just suddenly go from an all dry hay and pellet diet to all of a sudden now you're feeding them all wet food uh, because that can cause some GI problems. Um, you can get a lot of diarrhea, which can lead to gas formation and because their GI tract just isn't used to that much water in their diet. But these are all really good. Arugula, which although it is a dark leafy green and contains a lot of those benefits, is also low in oxalate, so just keep that in mind. Carrot tops, cucumber leaves, kale, which I've already mentioned, mochi, red or green lettuce, romaine is kind of the one that I tend to do the most of because I also feed a lot of romaine to my bearded dragon, fun fact. The other one is spring, just like spring greens, um, usually like a mix. Turnip greens, dandelion greens, mint, basil, watergrass, chicory, raspberry leaves, cilantro, bok choy, fennel, forage leaves, dill leaves, yu choy. There are literally endless amounts of fresh vegetables that are really, really good for your rabbit. Uh, these are just some of those. There are more, um, but this is a pretty complete list of things that your rabbit can really love. And especially adding things like mint, or dill can really be a good experience for your bunny because not only is it flavorful, which is a flavor they maybe don't get all of the time, but it also is a healthy item in their diet. So this next group is the non-leafy vegetables that should only be a small part of your rabbit's diet. So when I say a small part, what I mean is probably like 10 to 15%. They are good and they definitely can have some really, really good things in them, but often they're gonna be a lot lower in fiber than your rabbit's GI tract is designed for, and so you can basically overload them and cause diarrhea, um, or they can cause other GI problems along the line. So, what types of these vegetables are good? Well, the classic one is obviously carrots. Carrots are the probably most well-known one. 
of these and they're they are good but only 15 percent of your rabbit's diet should be these type of vegetables other ones can be broccoli and this is leaves stems anything along those lines edible flowers so these can be roses uh, pansies hibiscus and there's probably other ones as well celery bell peppers chinese pea pods so the one without the large peas and this is just because the large peas contain a lot of carbohydrates that are easily digested um, and or they can cause gas when they're digested in their gi tract brussels sprouts cabbage these should all be a small amount and one of the other risks of any of these vegetables is gas production this doesn't go for the leafy greens this is just these vegetables gas production can be very detrimental to your rabbit's health it can end up leading to gi stasis um, because they can basically have gas be uncomfortable and then they stop eating which makes their gut not move anymore which can lead to more gas formation and make them eat even less and so just being really careful with these your rabbit can have them but just don't overdo it don't just one day decide oh i'm going to feed them five leaves of cabbage that's probably not a good idea but if you're including this with their other leafy greens and just including you know, a small amount, it can be really good for them, uh, but just be careful with it. Fruits can be really good. They can be really high in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, all of those really good things. But this is probably the one that I'm going to be the most strict about. Fruits should only be given as basically a treat, like one to 2% of your rabbit's diet, maybe a little bit more up to like 5%. So as far as it goes, you know, a strawberry a day is not going to hurt them. A couple pieces of pineapple is not going to hurt them. But if you start feeding lots and lots of these fruits, what you are going to cause is those carbohydrates to be broken down rapidly, causing diarrhea, GI upset, and GI stasis. So do not do this. And if you don't cause these things and your rabbit's really well acclimated to these fruits, you have a very high likelihood of causing them to become obese because they're just so high in sugar and a rabbit's digestive tract is really good at taking out all that sugar and making it into fat. So these are good in small quantities, but very small quantities. Apple is a really good one and it can be any variety. Just make sure you don't have stem or seeds because they can be toxic. Cherries without the pits can be really good as well. Pears, peaches, plums, kiwi, papaya, mango, melons can all be really, really good things. Just make sure if you do anything with a pit, make sure you take the pit out. If you do anything with a skin for the most part, like pineapples or kiwis, make sure you take the skin off. Melons, you do not have to take the rind off. Melons can be really good and the rind can be a good source of water for a rabbit. Uh, cucumbers also fall in this category. Um, almost the fruits because even though they're not high in nutrients they are very high in water and being high in water they can cause diarrhea and some of the same problems so cucumbers are fine in small very small amounts but don't overdo it on cucumbers either a few other fruits that are in this kind of group are going to include bananas without the peel and i don't know about you guys but my rabbits absolutely love banana mango and nectarines um, so basically most fruits are going to be safe for your rabbit in small quantities. So as a whole, fresh fruits and vegetables can be a really good addition to your rabbit's diet. There are a few rules and a few things to keep in mind when you are feeding them these fresh fruits and vegetables, but I feel like it's pretty easy for you guys to get a handle on what's probably safe and what's probably not, and really get a good handle on your rabbit's diet. Because I can't tell you enough that as a veterinarian, a lot of problems arise from a rabbit having an improper diet. Now, you know, obviously things like having an ear infection or having E. caniculi are not going to be a result of their diet. But if they go into GI stasis, if they have a sludgy bladder, if they have teeth problems, if they have other GI problems like constipation, a lot of these can often be attributed to improper diet or improper housing. Hopefully you guys stay healthy and happy and hopefully your bunnies love their new and fresh vegetables and fruits. So hopefully you guys can spoil them in a good way and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, 
make sure you guys leave a like. It really helps me to know what content is being helpful and which content you guys maybe don't care about. So if you like the video, if you think it was helpful, make sure you leave a like. And if you enjoy my type of content, make sure you guys subscribe. I've got a couple of really interesting videos coming out here in the very near future. It'll be some pretty cool stories from the vet clinic. So have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. We'll see you in the next video.